At this point, unless you have been living under a rock, you have probably used ChatGPT. Most of us have awed at its ability to hold coherent conversations and often provide really precise answers. But how does it do that? Well, ChatGPT is trained in three stages. The language model, also known as the pre-training phase, the supervised training, also known as the fine-tuning phase, and then finally, reinforcement learning. Let's look at the first stage in further detail. Language models are everywhere. Every big AI player has one. OpenAI has GPT, Google has Palm, Meta has Llama, Microsoft has Turing, and so many more. In a nutshell, language models are nothing but next word predictors. Given a sequence of input tokens, they predict the next token. An example from this sequence would be, if the input is start, Alice, and painted, the prediction would be the word her. If the input is Alice, painted, her, the prediction would be house. If you do this process billions of times over a diverse data set, you get a language model. The language model used by ChatGPT has about 175 billion parameters and it has been trained on a good chunk of internet, including all of Common Crawl, all of Wikipedia, and so much more. At this point after training, what you have is a model which gives you the probability of what the next word should be, given the n previous words. n is about 3000 for ChatGPT. But simple next word prediction isn't what ChatGPT does. It generates a response based on a given prompt or the conversation history. So what was even the point of training the model? The pre-training was to learn the structure of the language and learn its grammar. Now there are a lot of things we glossed over like uses of transformers, tokenization. Maybe we'll dive deeper into it in another video. So what makes ChatGPT a conversational model rather than a next word predictor? So to make ChatGPT a conversational model rather than a next word predictor that we have right now, we fine tune our language model using supervised training. For fine tuning, we first need to collect some data. OpenAI turns to their human annotators, which play both sides of the conversation on a variety of topics. Then we use this data to further train the language model where instead of predicting the next word, now we predict the next word given the history of the conversation. Although the exact specifics on the number of labelers or training samples are unknown, OpenAI did mention that they were able to train a smaller version of ChatGPT called InstructGPT with the help of just 40 human labelers. The reason they are able to do this with just a small amount of human labelers is because after the pre-training of the language model, it becomes very sample efficient and does not need a lot of examples to learn the task. So if training the language model helped the model understand the structure of the language, the supervised fine tuning helped the model be more coherent and learn to use the context of the conversation to produce better answers. But even with supervised fine tuning, human labelers can only talk to ChatGPT about a limited number of topics for a limited amount of time. But ChatGPT seems to know everything under the sun with reasonable accuracy. And we get to that with the help of the final stage of the training called reinforcement learning. The premise of reinforcement learning is very simple. We have a model, also known as agent sometimes, and an environment. The model performs an action in the environment and gets a reward based on how good or bad the action was. However, the idea of a reward in a conversation is a bit tricky. How do we even say one conversation is better than the other? The idea of measuring reward is not complicated for all the environments, 
For example, in the Atari game of Breakout, one can just assume length of the gain to be the reward, as better models tend to play the game longer and longer. Or with the game of Space Invaders, where the reward could just be the score of the game. So to construct a reward model for a conversation, OpenAI turns to its human labelers again. But this time, to rank multiple responses from best to worst based on a variety of factors such as structure, coherence, and more. Again, not a lot of information about this step is open sourced, so we don't really know how many answers were ranked by how many labelers during the step. But with the data from this step, we can finally train a reward model, which takes two answers and the history of the conversation as input and predict which answer is better. Now that we have our reward model, we can finish setting up the reinforcement learning environment. At any moment, the environment has two language models, one in the active state and the other one in the reference state. The reward model takes the response from both the models and the conversation history and then updates the parameters of the active language model using a training process called proximal policy optimization. Now the problem with this setup is that our reward model isn't perfect. How could it be since it was only trained on a small subset of ranked answers? It cannot reward all conversations about a variety of topics in the world properly. And over time, the model may start taking advantage of the deficiencies of this reward model. To understand with an example, imagine you are playing a board game with someone and you realize you can never lose if you just flip the board over. Well, that's what the active language model may do if we just use the reward from this model to improve it. This has been observed experimentally as well, where after a few rounds of training, the active language model will just stray away from its behavior just to game the reward model. To make sure this doesn't happen, the KL divergence between the active and the reference language model is also used to update the active language model. This makes sure that the active LM does not stray away too far from the behavior of the reference model. Over time, as more and more people have conversations with ChatGPT about a variety of topic, it gets better at responding to them. Every once in a while, the models are versioned and the active LM becomes the reference and a new copy of the active LM is trained further. ChatGPT is far from perfect apart from its factual inconsistency. It has loads of problems related to bias, scale, and misuse. But one thing's for certain that the age of AI is here and it is here to stay.